Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. So if you watched my last Kim Zosiak and Croy story, you remember me asking the question, Kim, what did you do? We finally found out. And you know, when we go there, we dig deep. We've got the bank statements. Kim spent $127,000 in one month, leaving Croy with $760 to his name. Now they're saying Kim wants Croy to submit his hair samples because Croy is allegedly smoking that good ganja. But baby, the way Kim is going through money, Croy, keep your hair because she's going to take it and make it into a wig and sell it for gambling. Child, if it's ganja that he's smoking, I'm glad it is because the way Kim is going through his money, she is about to milk you dry. Y'all, we are going to break into all of that and so much more. But before we do, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any news regarding this story and so much more. Now let's get back into it. So the question went from Kim, what did you do? To Kim, why did you do it? Now I understand everyone has their vices. Some people smoke, some people drink, some people have sex. Well, Kim supposedly, according to Croy, has a problem gambling and her website of choice is Coinbase. Now I went through a 16 page bank statement and when I tell you, the payments are bouncing left and right. Kim's problem is so bad, $127,000 from last month bad, and Croy ain't got it. Kim is making some money on Cameo. You know, that's when you get online and you wish someone happy birthday or happy wedding anniversary or whatever. Kim is making some money off from there, but other than that, it looks like no money is really coming in, and this is strictly Croy's bank statement. I don't know if Kim has her own bank statement or what, Croy's name is the only name on this bank statement and Kim has milked the account dry. And honestly, I'm understanding why Croy wants full custody of the kids now because looking at this gambling problem, it's pretty bad. The court has to consider, do you leave them with the dad that likes the puff puff pass or do you leave them with the mama that's gambled everything away except for her ass? Okay, so let's go ahead and get into these documents and then we're gonna get into the bank statements. Now it says that during the party's marriage, respondent, meaning Kim, presented very troubling behavior which has accelerated in the months leading up to petitioners filing for divorce. Respondent has acknowledged spending substantial time and marital funds on gambling and other games of chance. The compulsion has financially devastated the parties. C, Exhibit A. Respondent's time is so consumed with online gambling that she is unable to properly care for the children. As such, the petitioner is concerned for the children's safety and well-being. Petitioner asserts it is in the best interest of the children for respondent to be psychologically evaluated to ascertain any underlying mental issues such as depression, anxiety, narcissistic personality disorder, bipolar disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or others that are manifested through respondents' compulsive gambling and other behaviors indicative of additional addiction issues. Petitioner requests that respondent be required to undergo psychological testing performed by a licensed psychologist agreed upon by the parties to the best of petitioner's knowledge and belief, no psychological evaluation has yet been completed on respondent. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all this. In the last document, Croy kept alluding to, Kim don't make me do it. He said, look, I could tell other things, but I'm not gonna do it yet, maybe later on. And I believe that when Kim said that he needed to be evaluated for smoking that ganja, Croy said, all right, let me bring out the big guns and tell people while I'm really divorcing you. Now, Kim must be a highly liked woman in the celebrity streets because I'm really trying to understand why not even TMZ is going over these bank documents. But since we have them and no one else does, let's go ahead and name this a Chronicle Speaks exclusive. Y'all go ahead and cue my theme music. Da -da -da -da, Inspector Chronicle. Da -da -da -da. Okay, now this is only Croy's bank statement. I don't see Kim's name on the statement. However, Croy is saying that this is the bank statement proving that Kim has a problem with gambling. Now on this bank statement, the bank statement closed on the 24th of March. And on that date, Croy had a total of $3,825.48 in that account. Now, the next statement, there was a total of $3,176 taken out in checks. 
Now, in this current billing statement, there was a total of $127,287.12 added to the account. But then there was a total of $127,176.23 taken out of the account. So that left Croy with $760.37. This statement was printed on April 22nd. I'm not sure how long it took for the statement to actually get to Croy, but on May 5th, he filed for divorce. Now y'all remember the last statement ended on March 24th. So I don't have the statement from that month, but I guarantee y'all on the 25th, Kim was racking them charges up. Coinbase, $61. Coinbase, $350. Coinbase, $25. $250. $250. $150. It goes on and it doesn't stop. So I added up the money that she spent from Coinbase on the 25th of March and it totaled $3,509. Now again, if you remember Croy's bank account last month or the month before, only had $3,825 in it. Now not only did Kim go through the money, but they also had an Amazon purchase, Experian.com purchase, an Apple bill purchase, other things was purchased. So in that time, Kim spent up all of his money and then money that he didn't have, and then guess what? Return item fees. Y'all know they hit you with the $36 fees if you ain't got the money in your account. So on the 25th, Kim supposedly went hard in the paint. On the 26th, she decided to take a break. 27th, she decided to take a break. 28th, Kim crunk it back up. Now on the 28th, they tried to give money to St. Jude, but it reversed. Couldn't do it. Gave money to Tracy Bloom, which is her chef. Couldn't do it. Then Coinbase, she went ham again. On the 28th, Kim spent $3,704.99 on Coinbase. Now this is a day. Your husband had $3,000 left over at the end of the month before, but you're going through $3,700 a day. So in turn, what happens? Return item fee. On the 29th, Kim spends $4,229. So what Kim is doing, it seems like it's transferring money from her PayPal account to Croy's account. So if the money is in Croy's account, then she uses that. But if it's not in his account, there's about three other accounts that hold money that have been transferring money to Croy's account. But the minute it gets in there, it comes right back out. Now again, because of all of these purchases made to the account, there are a lot of return item fees and the type of bank account he has Six return item fees can be done a day. After that, you're not charged for any return items. So he'll get six, and then you'll see a lot of fee not charge, fee not charge, fee not charge. Then the next day, he'll get six again, and then you'll see fee not charge, fee not charge, fee not charge. Then the next day, and it keeps going on and on. Looking at the dates, Coinbase definitely seems like they're closed on the weekend because I never see any purchases on the weekend. But there are so many return item fees till it's not funny and it just does not stop as far as the purchases that are being made now as far as the deposits credits and interest that is coming back to the account again there's about three different accounts that have been putting money from that other account back into Corey's account there are also times when Kim does get paid from Cameo one time she got a $7,600 check another time she got a check for $393 so Kim is making money it might not be what she's used to but money is definitely being made so in all there was a total of $127,178.23 spent in one month so Croy came with the receipts to pretty much let everybody know this is what I've been dealing with in silence for a long time and I can't deal with it anymore because sis is about to take me to the poor house and Kim wants Croy to stop smoking the ganja and submit to a five panel hair follicle drug screen and to not cut or remove any of his hair until such time as the screen is complete Croy isn't playing when it comes to his kids he has completed the children in between online parent education for divorce and family course it was a four hour course of study on parent education for separating divorce and families and it included five quizzes and one final exam and he passed with a 99% score. It does not seem like he's playing when it comes to these kids but I guess at this point it's up to the judge to see who is the parent more fit to take care of the kids at this point and I believe with Croy being able to show the bank statement it doesn't seem like he would have much of a problem winning this case and I'm kind of now understanding why everything is going on with the house being in foreclosure 
why Kim's coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta for a few guest appearances, and why this marriage that seemed to be pretty picture perfect wasn't such a perfect picture after all. What I need to do is hear from you. What do you think about all of this gambling going on in the world of Kim Zosiak Beerman? And how do you think Croy's handling the situation? Do you think it was okay for him to put this information out? Leave a comment and you know how we do. We'll talk about it down below. Talk to you guys later. Bye. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new episodes.